Hey guys, Ben here, and welcome back to another video on Supergirl Season 5. Today we're going to be talking about some new leaks. This is all coming from Supergirl.tv, so I'll leave the link in the description below, and you guys can check out their site, because their site is brilliant. I love it. It has all the information, has loads of articles, so go check it out. So if you do go on to enjoy the video, please be sure to leave a like and a comment, and subscribe if you're new, so you don't miss any DC TV videos later this year. Okay, so... As you know, recently there's sort of been a lack of anything really in terms of news. They actually announced the release date for Supergirl. It's coming out on October 6th and it's still on a Sunday. It's an hour later and we're having it week to week at that very same time after Batwoman. So that was some new news. We got the new poster that you can see on the screen right now. It's a really cool poster. And so what we're talking about today is they've got in the spoiler section on the site, that being Supergirl.tv, some new sort of casting descriptions and new sort of plot points for what's going to be happening in the next season and you have to take it with a grain of salt because this is coming from leaked casting auditions and a lot of the time if you go back and look at past audition scripts they don't always become part of the real canon they don't always sort of line up to what they're actually planning to do this is just you know they give fake names, they do fake dialogue, just random dialogue made up on the spot to test the actor. So that's happened many times in the past and they always use trick names so it doesn't really matter as in regards to names. And you have to obviously take it with a grain of salt that a lot of this stuff could potentially change but for now it seems like it's probably going to happen. So let's go ahead and break down these casting leaks and sort of plot leaks as well. So number one, and this is all coming from the spoiler section, you can check it out yourself. Lena sells Catco. You might remember that Lena bought Catco from Cat's Trust. Her friendship with Kara. Now that Lena knows who Kara really is, it looks like she isn't being very friendly. A known DC character will be the owner, we'll talk about that in a sec, but let's talk about this bit first. So Lena supposedly is going to sell Catco and it seems like it's out of spite for Kara being Supergirl. I still think Lena's smart enough to get around it. Obviously, she's going to go dark because of, you know, the way they're sort of directioning Lena to go down this season with the reveal of Kara being Supergirl and her being lied to this whole time. Honestly, if this was real life and, you know, they talk about this lie stuff, and if you found out your best friend was Supergirl, wouldn't you be so happy? I'm not sure if it's going to sort of go well for Lena and the reception to the show, especially to do with this plot point, because I think a lot of fans of Lena, but also a lot of fans of just Supergirl as a whole, the show, you know, it doesn't really make sense that she would go ahead, you know, lash out just because Kara is Supergirl and sell Catco, so I don't know if this is going to happen. I'm not such a big fan of this concept, but like I said, it's just an audition tape that has leaked. So let me know in the comments down below what do you think about all of this. Okay, so now moving on to the second thing. Number two, Andrea Rojas, aka Akrata, and I have no idea if I'm saying that right, correct me in the comments if you know how to actually say it, is actually the new owner of Catco. She is looking to turn Catco into a more successful media firm by covering gala events and tweeting more. DC fans will recognize that name as the hero Akrata. Akrata is a Mexican superhero who uses ancient Mayan symbol to teleport through shadows. It's unknown if this iteration of the character will have powers. Okay, so let's break this bit down. So Andrea is coming to the show and in the comics she has a superhero alias and she's a Mexican superhero. So, you know, with the show they try and go for diversity. So that makes sense in the direction that they would be going with that. You know, maybe it's a sort of near thing where she's working normally, you know, so you see her normal life and she eventually turns into a superhero. I'm down for that. That looks that sounds exciting. However, I don't really like the idea of Supergirl and I've ranted about this online talking and sort of going into social media because if you look at The Flash and all the different shows that have tackled it, especially on the CW, it is so cringy beyond belief and I think a lot of you guys will agree with me that I'm not so sure they should go down the tweeting route. I don't think they should go down the social media route. I guess it makes sense that, you know, they want to comment on what's happening in society right now with, you know, social media being a big thing, but the way it's portrayed, especially if you look at Spin last season on The Flash, she was a one-off villain. She was the cringiest thing ever. 
and she was using social media and doing all of that. So I feel like I don't think this is a good direction to go down the social media rabbit hole, sort of talking about the company tweeting more and yeah, it just doesn't budge well with me. So let me know, do you get that same impression because, you know, of past iterations, you know, say spin last season just giving me a little bit of a bad taste because she was so cringy. I really hope that if they do go this way, they find a way to make it less tongue-in-cheek and to make it serious, but also not be so focused on it. And focus on a really good story like we had at the end of last season with Red Daughter and Lex, which, you know, was a shame that they didn't get more time because the first part of the season with Agent Liberty and with Manchester Black, there was no real story. They could have been defeated in a few episodes or so. It was more about, you know, society, normal society, humans versus aliens, and it really didn't act for a good story. And if you look back at season three or any of the past seasons, you can tell, at least for the first part of season four, there was no real story. They just had these concepts that they wanted to use. And although the season obviously got better and it got really good, by the time we had Red Daughter and Lex, there was no real story before that, so if they focus on this too much, the social media stuff, that could sort of overshadow, you know, a real story, a real interesting story, so, yeah. I just hope they don't go too far into that rabbit hole, but I'm excited for Andrea actually coming and being the new owner of Catco. I think James is obviously going to stay his stay in his own position and Andrea's just going to take over what Lena was doing before. Although, like, Lena wasn't really totally involved in Catco by the end of last season, although she still owns it, obviously. So, looking forward to her, looking forward to seeing if she gets powers or not. Okay, so number three, Kara wins the Pulitzer. So, of course, Kara's investigative work with Lex Luthor leads her to winning the highest prize in journalism. So, yeah, I don't think there's anything really to make of this. Obviously, it's just bigging up the idea of what's happening, you know, in terms of Kara and her journalism. I don't know if that would, you know, warrant a Pulitzer Prize, but, you know, we'll have to wait and see. It's a show. Who cares? Okay, so number four, we have... Another prize-winning journalist joins the staff. So there is a call-out for a male journalist to join the CatCo staff. This person will have local ties and will help move the company forward in their social media focus transition. Okay, so this is the bit where I'm like, uh, not sure about this again. I don't know. Obviously, this is just from like one or two script leaks, like from auditions. So it's just for a few characters. So that's why it's so heavily focused on CatCo and all the stuff happening there. But why would a call go out for a male journalist? Why can't it just be a journalist? That's a bit weird. That kind of rubs me the wrong way. And also the fact that this person is gonna come. I have this feeling and people have been saying this online. Do you think this is like a new love interest? Do you think it's like a Clark Kent to a Lois Lane where they have this competitive sort of nature in the room because now Kara's a prize winning journalist, he's a prize winning journalist, he's a male, she's a female and yeah, I don't know, that just, there's some of this stuff kind of budges me the wrong way. I feel like this is a little bit strange and also he's here to push the company into the social media focus transition. I've ranted about that already and how I don't think that's a really good idea if they focus it. Maybe in the background it will be fine, but yeah. So I'm not very positive on some of these leaks. I'm positive on Andrea coming, but I don't really like the idea of them focusing on social media and I don't know if it feels right that Lena would sort of snap and sell Catco just off the bat because she found out Supergirl was obviously Kara. So, yeah, I don't know. But I'm going to talk about one more thing, and this is a Q&A question that has been asked, and so this is the question. So, after Crisis on Infinite Earths, would you want Supergirl to be on the same Earth as the other Arrowverse shows? So, after Crisis, there is a high possibility that a lot of Earths are probably going to merge together. So, I believe in Crisis, and I haven't read it in about a year or so, or probably longer actually. There is a total of six worlds that is left. I could be wrong on that. I would have to go back and read it all again before the crossover. But, basically, some Earths remain fine. However, tons of Earths get destroyed, and so, I think the question of, is Supergirl going to merge, would I like it? I actually prefer Supergirl being on another Earth, and 
I guess it would be an excuse for us to get more crossovers with, say, The Flash, which I really want, so that would be a good aspect. But also, at the same time, I like how it's a different Earth and how different stuff is happening. It's not all exactly the same. You know, we can't have that comparison of why can't Supergirl just be here all the time, defeat The Flash's villains, or why can't The Flash be here defeating Supergirl's villains? And, yeah, I just like the concept of the multiverse. I don't want them to destroy all the Earths. I don't want them to merge all the Earths together. Obviously, some Earths are going to get merged. Maybe Earth 3 and Earth 2 gets merged with Earth 1. We get the reintroduction of some of the stuff that we had in The Flash Season 2 and stuff like that. But I would say for Supergirl, I would prefer it to actually stay on Earth 38. Maybe they change the name so it's like Earth 2 now because there's only like 5, 6 Earths that are left. So, yeah. That's what I would say. So let me know in the comments down below. What do you think about the spoilers? And what do you think about this Q&A question? Do you want Supergirl to merge with the other Arrowverse shows? Do you want it to merge with Earth 1 essentially? So thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you guys later. Goodbye.